Greetings, fellow followers of the stars. This is Rick Levine here with your October astrology forecast. I am recording this on the evening of Thursday, September 30th. It's the October forecast. And I am recording this from a, a cabin on the edge of Loon Lake up in the central Adirondack Mountains in central upstate New York. And, um, and we have uh, a, a very interesting month laid out in front of us. Uh, you know, we've been in this situation now where uh, a compound mixture of major events going back all the way to the Uranus Pluto squares of 2012 to 2015 that harkened back to the 19 mid 1960s and set up some very huge transformational changes around the planet that brought a lot of the issues from the 1960s back onto our plate, including gender issues and, um, well, certainly uh, gay marriage and le legalization of uh, that along with environmental issues and along with uh, power politics and revolution and or demonstrations, um, civil rights and race relations, and even um, the use of, um, in the 60s, psychedelics and marijuana. And we saw in that 2012 to 2015 period, the beginning of a new wave of um, legalization of first medicinal and then recreational use of cannabis and, and other substances. That period of time, 2012 to 2015, led, and we're really still uh, experiencing the waves of change that came from that period of time. But that led into the cluster of planets in Capricorn that in some ways was a um, solidification and then a deconstruction and now aiming toward a reconstruction. That popping sound, by the way, is just a fire that you can't see in, in the uh, fireplace behind me. Um, so these are noises of uh, being in the North Woods. Um, but the uh, 2020 period of time that began with the Saturn-Pluto conjunction in mid-January uh, of 2020, and then three a series of three Jupiter-Pluto conjunctions through 2020, uh, culminating in the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction in December of 2020, which of course is part of a 20 year cycle, that Jupiter-Saturn conjunction cycle, but this one being attached to the, what's called the great mutation where there's an elemental change that made this quite rare. Plus this was also the first time that Saturn conjuncted Pluto while Saturn was in its own sign in Capricorn um, since the days of Martin Luther and the beginning of the Protestant Reformation, or as I like to call it, the Protestant Reformation. And so all of these things led up to 2021 when we experienced um, so far two of three squares between Saturn, the planet of structure, of stability, of um, conservation of energy, uh, the planet of um, control and, and holding it together, the, the, pla the planet that has to do with the status quo, and Saturn squaring Uranus, Uranus, the progressive planet, Uranus, the futuristic planet, Uranus innovation and irrepressible and even radical revolutionary energy. And these um, three squares in 2021 uh, between Saturn and Pluto are really setting the stage for what's occurring, not just in October, but uh, really in October, November, and December. And there's a sweep of energy that we're going to begin feeling in October, but October is a bit of a peculiar month because we've been on a retrograde run 
where um, Jupiter, Saturn, Chiron, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto uh, have all turned retrograde, have all been retrograde. And what we run into in October is the beginning of a sweep of planets moving from retrograde, turning direct. Now, in this also, we have Mercury, which turned retrograde on the 26th, I think, of September. And Mercury will remain retrograde until the mid-month. Um, it turns direct on October 18th. So we have this energy that's holding back, that's, that's preventing us from moving forward. But all the little planets, except for Mercury in the past few weeks, have all been moving direct. So we've had obviously the sun and, and the moon, which never turn retrograde. And Mercury has been direct, but it's now retrograde um, as of just a few days ago and will be for the first 18 days of October. But we have Venus direct and Mars direct. And there's been this sense of, the, of stirring up noise, of stirring up energy as these little planets, I say little, I mean the fast, the inner planets are moving forward. And yet the real hold on the movement of, of, of progression, of moving really into new territory has been the fact that Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, uh, Chiron, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are all holding back. Well, October is the beginning of the end, um, or maybe it's the ending of the beginning, because <clears throat> in October, um, we have Pluto turning direct on uh, October 6th. We have Saturn turning direct on October 10th. We have Jupiter turning direct on October 17th. And then we have Mercury turning direct on October 18th. So there's a whole lot of shifting energy of planets moving forward. But we have to be careful about saying, oh, the planet's going direct and therefore that releases energy and we move forward. Why do we have to be careful about that? Because when a planet changes from retrograde to direct or direct to retrograde, it has to slow down in order to change. Just like a pendulum swinging back and forth, a pendulum goes fastest in the middle of its cycle. And then as it approaches one sweep upward, it slows down, slows down until it stops. And then it changes direction, but it moves very slowly and then picks up speed until it's moving very quickly at the middle part of the cycle. And then it does that again. Point of reference is that as a planet is changing direction, as it's going through that station process, as it's moving from direct to retrograde, or in this case, retrograde to direct, the planet is not moving very fast for a day or even days or even weeks on the outer planets prior to and after the actual stationary um, changing of direction. What this means is that October is a, we're, the, the cosmos is putting us on notice that we're now be, we're moving into a season where eventually all the outer planets will be moving direct. And although um, uh, Pluto, Saturn and Jupiter and Mercury, but Mercury is kind of separate, but as those planets move direct, those planets are not moving very fast. And, and in fact, um, Pluto is at about 24 and a quarter degrees um, at the very beginning of, of the month. And it's um, at about 24 and a half degrees at the end of the month. So from the beginning of the month to the end of the month, Pluto barely moves a quarter of a degree. And the same is true with, um, um, with uh, Saturn. Um, Saturn at the beginning of the month um, is at about almost seven degrees um, it is retrograde, and it's about six degrees and 50 some odd minutes at the beginning of the month. And at the very end of the month, Saturn is only at seven degrees um, uh, and 11 minutes of, of, uh, of Aquarius, which means that Saturn also 
barely moves a quarter of a degree all month. The rough rule of thumb is that the slower moving the planet, the more power that it has. Uh, Pluto as the slowest moving of the regular um, planets, um, Eris even slower moving than Pluto, they contain a huge amount of power, but because they move so slowly, things don't change very quickly. And in fact, it takes a faster moving planet um, like the sun or the moon or Mercury or Venus or Mars to trigger an energy from these slower moving planets. But you have Saturn, which normally moves slowly. But now because it's changing direction, this month it's even moving more slowly than it normally does, which in some ways gives it even more power for us to um, entrench, um, to hold on to what we have. Um, and, and all of the outer planets, or at least Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto are going through the same kind of thing. So here's, here's the irony of, of uh, October. The irony is that everything is changing and moving direct, even Mercury by the middle of the month, but even Mercury, when it turns direct um, on October 18th, it does that at about 10 degrees of, um, of Libra. And, um, and Mercury is just maybe barely by the end of the month at 20 degrees, it barely moves 10 degrees. And of course, Mercury is the fastest moving of all the regular planets. Um, Mercury at the beginning of the month is at 24 degrees. So Mercury at the beginning of the month and at the end of the month is pretty much at the same place. <laughs> it backs up 10 degrees and moves forward 10 degrees. And so the dilemma of October is that we begin to get teased by the cosmos Things are beginning to move forward, but they're not moving forward yet. And this tries our patience because so many of us are suffering from frustration burnout, meaning that we've been stuck in various kinds of holding patterns and various kinds of um, restraints and restrictions since back in January, February, March of, of 2020. And, and we're all itching to, to, to break loose and to move forward. And yet October sets us up for it. And yet we don't get to do it. And so we have to pay attention that we don't let our frustration get out of control and turn to um, unnecessary or even harmful anger. Um, let's jump into the charts uh, and, and, take, and, and take a pass through the month and see what's up. Um, but what's the most significant thing I believe this month is, are these, this, this change from retrograde energy to direct energy. But it's going to take until November and even December and January for us to really be moving forward. And then there's another piece of this puzzle and that is the Saturn Pluto, I'm sorry, the Saturn Uranus square. And that's the square, the conflict between Saturn the old and Uranus the new, Saturn the conservative, Uranus the progressive, Saturn the control, and Uranus the independence or freedom. This dilemma of these extreme opposites that kind of go across so many issues right now, um, not only in the United States, but around the world politically, but even in our own individual lives and relationships. And the thing is, is that we had the first of the three Saturn-Pluto squares back in February of 2021. We were already feeling it in January because Jupiter was making that square with Uranus. And, and then in, in February, Saturn made the square with Uranus. And then on the retrograde, Saturn makes the, made the square again with Uranus in mid-June. Now, Saturn has pulled all the way back and that square is rather wide. It's about a seven degree orb. And now in October, on October 10th, when Saturn begins to move direct, it's going to close the gap 
from seven degrees down to six, five, four, three, two. It sounds like a countdown for liftoff and lift out liftoff is on Christmas Eve, Eve or Christmas Eve, depending on where you are on the planet. And so everything between now and the end of the year, even now before Saturn has actually turned direct, Saturn is retrograding, but it's slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, so it can turn direct. And as it's slowing down, moving backwards, it also is because Uranus is also retrograde now, it's the, the orb is beginning to get tighter and tighter. And that will go all the way down to zero until that is exact um, the last week of December. And also in the last days of December, Jupiter will move out of Aquarius and back into Pisces. And I think it's going to take really getting until that point in time, until we're in January, February of next year um, of, of 2022, to really feel like we're around the bend in this. I know this isn't what a lot of people want to hear. Um, and, I, and, and it's frustrating. But this frustration is really the thing that we need to combat so we don't get sucked into um, uh, kind of uh, making stuff up to push harder than we um, harder than we should be pushing, which then will create events that will even set us back further. Let's look at a chart or two or more. Okay, so here we are looking at the chart for October 1st, 2021. And we can see that we have a conjunction between the sun and Mars at eight and 10 degrees um, uh, of Libra. And they are in fact opposing Chiron. The Mars opposition to Chiron is exact today. And so there's a bit of resistance or um, blockage for that Mars, which is um, in Libra, remember, <clears throat> Mars is naturally at home in Aries. And so in Libra, Mars is as far away from home as it can get. Um, we say that Mars is, is, is in its detriment or in its exile. It's far away. Doesn't mean it can't be effective, but it's not as comfortable there. And with Mars and the sun in Libra, there's a bit of of, of um, uh, forceful energy that wants to go forward. But in Libra, it's playing this kind of diplomatic game. This Libra is, is, is the ultimate strategist because Libra gets to weigh and balance both sides. And with Mars lined up with the sun, that's what it's doing, but it's opposing Chiron. And this is part of a theme all month. We'll see this come and go from um, as the sun reaches that opposition to Chiron um, also. Uh, and, and even as Mercury turn, um, uh, the, as the Mercury retrograde continues, Mercury almost reaches the opposition within a degree with, um, it reaches that opposition to Chiron and again. And so it's almost as if we have something to learn this month. And, and I think I know what it is that we need to learn this month. And I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to hold on to that for just a bit. But I think ultimately October is, is a, a month when there are lessons that need to be learned. And of course, the question is, will we learn them or not? Now, on the 1st of October, we also have Mercury squaring Pluto. Now, remember, Mercury is retrograde. Mercury squared Pluto about a week ago before it turned retrograde. Now it turns retrograde, squares Pluto a second time. And when Mercury turns direct um, in, in, on October 18th, um, by November, that Mercury will be squaring Pluto a third and final time. And so we need to remember that often those planets hit in one, two, three uh, swings. And so there's something here about the power struggle, Pluto, and the intellect and the trying to work out a compromise. Um, and that would be that Mercury in Libra. Um, also, by the way, that Mars moving forward, um, Mars at 10 degrees at the beginning of the month, by October 21st, 
Mars will be at 24 Libra, exactly squaring Pluto. And this is a bit of a heavier energy that has to do with, with real power plays. And, um, and I think it can be a very difficult um, passage um, uh, around that period of time, around October 21st. But it's being set up now by the Mercury square Pluto. And again, this is true in our individual personal relationships, and it's true in the larger political scenarios, um, both in the United States, in, in Russia, in, in Australia, in, in, in England. Um, these are large global issues also. As we move forward, um, by the third, the sun actually reaches that 10 degree point. I'm going to move this forward one day at a time. Um, and incidentally, for those of you who have been here many times before, um, these charts are all done with an Aries rising, which means that the planet locations uh, by Zodiac are correct anywhere on the planet if you adjust your time zone. These charts are all in Pacific time, Pacific daylight time now. And, um, and the reason why we're using the Aries rising is because the rising sign typically shows what's on the Eastern and Western horizons. And yet, depending upon where you are on the globe, that would change. And so by using an Aries rising, we have a chart that we basically say there is no houses, there are no houses in the chart, and we can move this around the globe freely. So wherever you are on the planet, as we move this ahead to October 2nd and October 3rd, you can now see that Mars has moved from 10 degrees to 12 degrees, but now the sun has moved in and the sun is exactly um, opposed Chiron. And so we still have this issue about what it is we need to learn. How do we deal with this deep inner stress that we're facing? And I'm going to kind of give a little bit of foreshadowing because I believe that what it is we need to learn is that there are no clear cut answers and although that can make us even more frustrated, the fact of the matter is that if uh, in any particular issue this month, if one side of, of, of an opposition, of one side of a conflict wins and the other side loses, there won't be any winners. In other words, we are in a situation now <clears throat> where it appears to be a struggle on so many different issues, whether it's um, issues about um, power politics, whether it's issues about um, COVID, whether it's issues about vaccination, whether it's issues about abortion, whether it's issues about environmentalism or protectionism or Afghanistan or, 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 or it just goes on and on and on. The fact, though, is that we are going to have to figure out how to make some compromises. And compromise here doesn't mean giving up your position. Compromise means coming up to some workable solution where, where we can still move forward while holding on to our position because, because this is a time of maximum stress and yet there's not going to be a simple answer to any of the questions that we are currently facing. On October 3rd, we also have Mercury forming a trine with Jupiter. And um, again, this is, this is interesting because um, that Mercury trine Jupiter already occurred also when Mercury was direct about a week ago. And, um, and Mercury will, in fact, um, trine Jupiter again on Halloween, on October 31st. The fact that Mercury trines Jupiter twice this month. The sun trines Jupiter on October 15th. Mars trines Jupiter on the 18th and Venus sextiles Jupiter on the 28th. This is one of the saving graces of October. The fact of the matter is that there are no hard angles to Jupiter. There is genuine potential for seeing a bigger picture that encompasses 
uh, multiplicity, that there is this idea that when Mercury trines Jupiter on October 3rd, we can go to a place where we can see something from a wide, we can see a wider perspective that is more inclusive. And, and again, this is going to be a repetitive aspect as different planets hit that same trine to Jupiter. And then late, later in the month, the very end of the month, once um, Mercury has turned direct, it will end the month making that same trine it made on the third at the beginning of the month, kind of giving us again this sense of hope, this sense of optimism, the sense of, um, uh, of kind of like if we can just hang on and keep pushing toward and working toward what we believe to be true, but at the same time engaging in constructive dialogue that allows us to move beyond a position of stalemate, remembering that if anyone wins, someone's going to lose. And if someone loses, it's not, the, the solution will not hold. These are complex times that we live in. So, um, so let's move on. Um, I'd like to just point out here also that on the third, we have the moon in Virgo and the moon is moving closer and closer. It's getting to be an older moon or we're coming into the dark of the moon and we will have our um, first lunation, which will be a new moon on October 6th. But I'm just pointing that out now while we are still on the um, on the, the on the third. So let's watch that moon move closer and closer to the sun. There's the third. And again, all these charts are for noon unless noted otherwise. Um, here's the fourth. You see how that moon is getting closer and closer to the sun. There is the fifth. This is noon on the sixth. And you can see how the moon is already past the sun. The actual new moon itself is at 4.05 a.m. And I'm going to bring up that chart right now. So here we are looking at the new moon chart for 4.05 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time on October 6, 2021. You can see that the sun and the moon are both at 13 degrees and 25 minutes. For all practical purposes, that's 13 and a half 13 and a half degrees of Libra, um, 13 degrees, 30 minutes would be actually 13 and a half degrees, but it's easier to refer it at, at that. Um, but the first thing that we notice is that this new moon is conjunct Mars. Mars also at 13 degrees, it's actually at 13 degrees, 59 minutes, almost 14 degrees, but it's a partile conjunction. Remember, a partile aspect are planets that are at the same, in the same degree, whether they're exact, like the sun and the moon are here at the new moon, or whether they're um, over, slightly over a half a degree apart, as um, is Mars to both the sun and the moon. So remember, Mars is not necessarily fully functional or really um, at, it, at ease while it's in Libra, because instead of being um, direct and reactive and taking charge and um, being a superhero, as it might be if it was in Aries, instead that Mars has to uh, look at both sides of every issue. I think of Joni Mitchell's song, um, I've, look at, I've looked at clouds from both sides now. That's what this Mars has to do. It has to be the diplomat, the go-between, the, um, um, the uh, um, counselor, um, who's working out, um, helping two people work out something in a relationship, uh, a mediator. That's the word I was looking for. Um, and, and yet it's punchy because that new moon, uh, meaning the sun and the moon, um, are very close to Mars. The moon catches up to um, Mars um, about an hour after the, ex after the exact, um, after the exact moment of the new moon. And the um, and the sun um, catches up with um, Mars uh, on October 7th. Uh, that would be the following day in about 24 hours. But both of these aspects are really close. But here's something else that's really important. And that is we have the sun and the moon and Mars all at 13 degrees, but we also have Uranus at 13 degrees. And that fat green line indicates that they are connected by a quink 
Ankhs. That's five twelfths of a circle. This is Ptolemy's, one of Ptolemy's inconjuncts, meaning that the planets can't see each other. They're on different pages in the same book. That they may even be in different books. Um, it's it's an annoying, irritating, um, difficult aspect because the planets are not in direct communication with one another. What does that mean? It means this fiery, feisty kind of Martian energy of wanting to make it right, wanting to have, find balance, wanting to create harmony. Remember, Libra isn't harmonious. It wants to find or seeks harmony. And that energy being quincunx to Uranus basically says Uranus wants instantaneous resolution for whatever the stresses are. In Taurus, Uranus can be a little bit lazy. It doesn't want to go to work unless it has to. But there's the sense here of that, of, of that irrepressible energy for that radical and, and upheaval energy, um, the sense of, of, of independence, of not following the party line, that Uranus is not fitting in. It, it, there, it's problematic here. There's nowhere for it to go because it's quincunxing not only the new moon, but Mars also. And then we look at the um, Mercury forming a trine with Jupiter still that's lingering. Um, we talked about that a couple of, um, on the third, that, that, that that was exact. Was that on the third? Um, yeah. Um, and, um, and, and so that's still within a couple of degrees because Mercury is not moving very fast right now. And so this is, again, about the communication aspect, about the hope and the optimism we have. But there is one last thing that we need to talk about here, and that is that the halfway point between constrictive Saturn and expansive Jupiter, um, Saturn saying no and Jupiter saying yes, the halfway point, the midpoint between six degrees, almost seven degrees, um, and 22 degrees is about 14 degrees. And it's very easy to do the math when you have two planets to, so close together to find their midpoint. It's 22 plus six. I know this is off a little bit because we're, um, we're, we're cutting off rather than rounding off. Um, 22 plus six um, is 28. Half of 28 is 14. So the midpoint of expansive Jupiter and constrictive Saturn is forming a trine to the new moon and Mars, which tells me that if we can figure out how to take the, the big ideas of Jupiter, the optimism, the idealism of Jupiter, and the reality and the authority and the structures of Saturn, if we can figure out a way to acknowledge both of those planets, that midpoint being trying the new moon gives us a way to create something new here. And it's interesting also that, that, um, that the midpoint between Jupiter and Saturn at 14 degrees of Aquarius is also square to Uranus, because remember, Saturn has moved kind of very wide from Uranus now. Um, like I said earlier, it's about seven degrees away from being exactly square, but the midpoint between Saturn and Jupiter is square. And so we still have that sense of that Uranian breakthrough solution comes in some way that no one expects, something, something that is out of the blue, something that is even ingenious. Um, we'll have to see how this plays out. Um, this is not an easy um, new moon because of the Mars, the, the god of war, um, so closely integrated into the new moon and the annoyance from Uranus, that, that lightning energy that can act out of frustration. And yet the solution from that Jupiter, um, uh, from the Jupiter-Saturn midpoint, I think really gives us a place to go and a place to focus our energy and the potential for a lasting solution here. So let's move along um, on the sixth also. Um, remember, we, we still have, um, 
Mercury, it's getting a little wide, but it's still square to Pluto. And on the sixth, Pluto is stationary retrograde. I'm sorry, it's, it's retrograde, but stationary direct. And we move this ahead one day, we can see that Pluto is still at 24 degrees, 19 minutes. We have Venus, though, having moved from Scorpio into Sagittarius. And I think this is a bit uplifting. This gives us um, a, I always want to say a breath, a, a fresh, a breath of fresh air. <laughs> it gives us a, a, a breath of fresh air. It gives us the potential of, of, of wanting something beyond the present moment. And remember, we've had this um, Jupiter, these trines to Jupiter, the danger of that Venus moving into Sagittarius is denial about what's real and instead just focusing on the, on the ideal. Um, but I do think that this is um, this feels good and that and that Venus is moving toward the nodal axis. I think this does give us some some hope from, you know, toward toward where we can move. By the way, we also have the sun moving into that conjunction. The sun's moving slightly faster than Mars, um, but they're moving so, so similar in speed. It takes several days for that sun to catch up to Mars and move past it. And that actually um, um, occurs on the 7th. Uh, the sun will catch up with retrograde. Um, let's see, the sun um, will catch up with, with Mars on the 7th, and then um, Mercury catches up with Mars on the 9th. So watch here where we can see um, Mercury retrograding back into Mars, Mars moving forward. This is the 7th. We'll move this ahead now another couple of days. And there is the sun catching up with and passing Mercury and Mercury moving back into Mars. This period of time, the moon is out of the picture now, but look at that sun, Mercury and Mars. And, um, and, and, and again, they're still in relative close trine to the Jupiter-Saturn midpoint, which is still at about 14, 14 and a half degrees um, of, of, of Aquarius. We also have on the ninth, the moon moving into Sagittarius and it conjuncts Venus and the South Node. We may find a solution that we passed over before. There's something here about the, the pleasure principle. Venus is tied to something that is in the past, something historical, because the South Node often has to do with um, regressive uh, um, timing, um, things from the past. So that is on the, the ninth. Um, also, now we have Saturn slowing down. And remember, here we have Saturn. Saturn actually makes it, technically, it makes its station on October 10th at 6 degrees and 53 minutes. But if we go back to the first of the month, Saturn is at six degrees, 57 minutes. And in 10 days, Saturn barely moves um, just a few minutes. Um, on, on the first, let me do this again. On October 1st, it's at 57 minutes. And on October 10th, when it actually starts moving direct, um, it's, uh, it's at 53 minutes. So it's barely, barely moved. And in fact, if we move this forward from the 10th, we can see here Saturn is at six degrees, 53 minutes. There's the 11th, there's the 12th. It's still at 653. Um, there's the 13th, there's the 14th, there's the 15th. It's moved one minute, one sixtieth of a degree in five days. So <laughs> this is the anomaly of when, when the slower outer planets change direction, they're really holding still for a long time, which builds intensity and power and entrenches whatever our positions are in whatever they are. And so this idea of October, yes, these planets are turning direct, <laughs> but they're not going anywhere and neither are we. And so again, we have that frustration lingering, lingering, lingering. 
Saturn turns direct on the 10th. We looked, we already talked about that. On the, um, by the time we get to the 15th, though, we also have um, the Sun actually having moved ahead of Mars. It picks up on a trine to Jupiter while the Moon is um, trining the Sun and going over Jupiter also. October 15th is actually a little bit of a, um, there's a sweetness here, not only because of the Sun trining Jupiter, but also Venus is moving into a trine with Chiron. That's not exact until tomorrow, until the following day, until the 16th. Um, but we have here a couple of days where we're getting fed these trine energies. And then even though the sun moves past the trine um, to Jupiter, and that sun trine to Jupiter is confident. It's, it's, it's buoyant. Um, it's, it's optimistic. It's, it's opportunity. It's hopeful. And even though the sun begins to move past that degree right away, Mars now comes into that same um, into that same degree, and Mars makes the trine with Jupiter by the 18th. So let's move this ahead to the 18th, and now we can see the sun has moved out of the way. It, well, it's three degrees orbit still in the picture, but Mars now is at 22 and Jupiter is at 22. Um, and so we're getting this um, sustained positive energy that Mars trying Jupiter is enthusiasm. It's the confidence to put our beliefs into motion, to physically work toward what we want. Um, I think these are, are tremendously uh, potentially positive days, but there's always, <laughs> there's always good news and bad news. And on October 17th, let's back this up just one day, we can see that um, the sun is now making an exact square to Pluto. I talked about that at the very beginning, guess at the beginning of the month, Mercury was there making that square to Pluto. Mercury has retrograded all the way back to 10 degrees. It's ready to turn direct tomorrow on the 18th. But remember, it's not moving very fast either. In fact, if we go back to the um, uh, October 15th, there's Mercury at 10 degrees, um, almost um, almost 11, but there's Mercury at 10 degrees of Libra, and it turns retrograde on the 18th at 10 degrees of Libra. That's three days later. Then one, two, three, um, it takes four days for it to then move. It's not until or three days until it actually moves to the next degree um, even less than a degree, and then it takes another couple of days to move through that degree. So Mercury is not moving very fast at all, but let's come back to the 17th. It, that Mercury square Pluto at the beginning of the month that will repeat at the end of the month, now we get the sun squaring Pluto. And then we're going to get Mars squaring Pluto. Um, and that Mars square Pluto is on the 21st. And this is difficult energy because there's some power plays going on here. There's some stuff going on that's not on the surface. Well, maybe there always is. But right now, it's kind of playing out loudly. And we can see this. And although we're getting some positive energy from these trines, we're also getting this um, more difficult energy, this subterfuge, this jealousy, this possession. Um, Pluto um, is transformation, transmutation of energy. And Pluto typically does okay as long as it's working, as long as we are working toward the common good of all. But as soon as people start working toward amassing p political power or bending facts out of shape to better their own position or playing politics rather than, than, than doing what's good for the people, Pluto doesn't like that. And that energy can get pretty nasty pretty quickly. On the um, 17th, we also have um, Jupiter making its station. Now, so by the 17th, we've had now Pluto turn direct, we've had Saturn turn direct, we have Jupiter turning direct on the 17th, and then Mercury on the 18th. And on the 18th, we also have that exact 
Mars trining Jupiter. This is optimism. This is positive energy. And we're coming into the full moon on October 20th. And you can see here that the moon is still is in Pisces. And we there the moon goes into Aries. And this is actually going to be um, on the 20th, a, um, an Aries full moon. So here we are looking at the Aries full moon for 7.56 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Um, and we can see that the sun is at 27 degrees, 26 minutes. That's again, it's about 27 and a half degrees of Libra. And the moon at 27 degrees Aries, 26 minutes, about 27 and a half degrees Aries. Um, that is the full moon. The, um, the sun in Libra wants equanimity, it wants balance, it wants harmony. And the Aries moon wants to impulsively um, just blast through any of that and, and get something done, make something happen, um, express what its own feelings or own motives are. But look again, we still have <clears throat> we still have Mars closely conjunct the sun. It's four degrees here. It's not as close as it was with the new moon. But remember, the sun and the moon are traveling kind of at a similar speed. The sun is moving faster. So this orb is growing. It's on um, the angle, um, the, the conjunction is separating. But we have an Aries, a feisty, fiery Aries full moon. The planet Mars is um, the ruling planet of um, Aries. And so that moon in Aries is going to look to Mars to do its work. And where's Mars? It's lined up with the sun in Libra. It wants to do diplomacy. It wants to find balance. And yet it's square Pluto. And again, we have this Pluto issue coming back again and again and again this month. And that Mars square Pluto, um, here we are at the full moon on the um, 20th, the exact square between Mars and Pluto isn't until the following day, isn't until the 21st. But it, at the full moon, it is really close. It's within a degree. Mars at 23 degrees of Libra and Pluto at 24 degrees of Capricorn. Um, and that Mars is still working off of that optimistic, overconfident, um, overamping trine to Jupiter. But that Pluto is at the apex of a T-square from the sun to the moon. That's an opposition with Mars there. And Pluto basically is feeding that conflict. And, you know, it, it's almost like the Mars square Pluto can, can be open conflict. And Mars can hit pretty hard and Mars can even win a battle. But Mars moves on and Pluto still has to finish its job in Capricorn of deconstructing the structures, the status quo. And so, um, so Pluto is not done. Mars, Pluto square brings things into high focus. But as Mars moves on and over the days ahead, the sun will move into Scorpio actually on the 22nd. We'll cycle this forward in just a moment. Mars moves into Scorpio on October 30th. And so Mars and the sun move away and that Pluto still has to finish its um, its work of, of taking things apart in the material world. Um, I like to um, kind of note that the transformation metamorphosis of a caterpillar into a butterfly, the butterfly can't begin to create itself until Pluto is done deconstructing the caterpillar. And so we still have some deconstruction work uh, ahead of us. And remember that, that we're coming into a year when Pluto, which was at 25, 26 degrees of um, Capricorn when the United States was born, the, the Declaration of Independence, the United States is experiencing its Pluto return. And although we humans experience a Saturn return at 2930 or a Uranus return um, at 84, uh, no human experiences, well, without a lot of alien blood, um, <clears throat> no human experiences 
a Pluto return that's 243, 44 years. And yet this is what's happening with the United States. And this is part of this deconstruction, reconstruction that's going on or appears to be going on. And so this full moon is rather intense because it is conflicted and square to Pluto um, during the full moon itself. That is the, um, the, the 20th, and that is the full moon. As we go to the 21st, we can see the Mars squaring Pluto now 24 degrees to 24 degrees. Um, and so that is exact, even though the, uh, the full moon has moved on. In fact, on the 21st, the moon conjoins uh, Uranus, and that in itself can be a bit of disruptive energy um, following the day after the, the full moon. That's the 21st. And then on the 22nd, the sun moves into, um, into Scorpio. It does it in the afternoon. This chart's for noon. So we'll have to move it ahead one more day to see that sun actually go into Scorpio. Um, but it actually enters Scorpio on the 22nd. Um, and it does it 9.51 p.m. And again, that specific daylight time. By the 26th, we have Venus forming a square with Neptune. So we're gonna move this ahead from the 23rd, 24th, um, 25th, 26th. There is Venus forming a square with Neptune. The energy has shifted now. The sun is well into, well into its three degrees um, into Scorpio. Um, in Scorpio, that sun's gonna square the other fixed planets and oppose um, the fixed planet, you know, Uranus and Taurus, and it'll square first Saturn and then Jupiter. These are all tough aspects. Um, they won't occur. Well, the um, square to Saturn occurs on October 30th, but the opposition to Uranus and the square to Jupiter won't occur until November. But these are all stirring up those same issues again and again and again. So we have here on the 26 Venus squaring Neptune um, and um, that Venus squared to Neptune basically it's confusion it's um, it's the lack of knowing what's really going on um, it is we may be in love Venus with a fantasy we may we may be attracted to some idea that is just out in left field. And, um, and this can go for any one of us, regardless of how sane we, we think we are. Um, and, and yet over the days ahead, Venus forms a half square with Saturn on the 28th. There's a bit of a reality check. And then later on the 28th, midday, Venus forms a sextile with Jupiter. And um, let's just roll this ahead a little bit. On the 26th, um, uh, on the 28th, Venus forms that half square um, with Saturn. That's a 45 degree angle. There's, there's some stress there between Venus thinking that everything's going to be okay if we just focus on the big picture and the distance that's Venus and Sagittarius. Um, and it's half square to Saturn. Saturn is basically saying, you're not getting away with that kind of sloppy thinking. You need to look at the facts. But you can see also that Venus is coming into a sextile with Jupiter. This again is like, it's gonna work out. Things are going to be okay. Um, that's the 28th. Um, by the 30th, the sun is exactly square. You can see this already happening on the 28th where, the, where it's a, third quarter moon, the moon is squaring the sun, and the moon is moving opposition to Saturn. Um, this could be a, there could be some tough energy this day, um, but it actually gets even tougher as the sun by the 30th makes an exact square to Saturn. 
Um, and this is definitely um, a uh, we karmic day until we get what we deserve. There is some restraint and some restriction, and we have to figure out what we can do in order to move ahead, in order to, to get ahead. Um, we also have here Mercury coming into a quink unx um, with Neptune. And again, this is just more, I mean, it's not having facts. It's we're missing something. And what's interesting here is that not only Mercury makes a quincunx with Neptune, but we now get that um, uh, direct Mercury, um, that third and final Mercury trining to, um, to uh, Pluto. Uh, I'm sorry, trining to Jupiter, Mercury trining to Jupiter. And you can see here, um, early in the day on the 30th uh, noon, it's at 20, but we move it ahead. And because Mercury now is gaining speed, um, moving a degree and a half, almost two degrees a day, that Mercury now is trining Jupiter. And this is how the month opened with that sense of hope and optimism. And this is how the month closes. So there's a lot going on in um, in October, and I wish I could say everything was smooth sailing. Unfortunately, I can't say that. Well, I could, but I would be lying. And on top of that, I wish I could say that all the planets shifting into direct motion was just great. We're going to have some clear sailing. I don't believe we're going to have really clear, clear sailing um, until the beginning of 2022, because I think that October, as these planets move direct, and then in November and December, as the other planets turn direct, um, the Neptune and Uranus and, and Chiron, um, I think that what happens is that we really begin to start moving into, um, into new territory. And yet it's the third and final um, Saturn square Uranus that occurs on December 23rd, 24th, that um, I think brings the year into a sense of focus. And it'll take a few weeks until after that, until the first few weeks of January, to actually put the whole thing together. And then by then, Jupiter has moved back into Pisces. And Jupiter moving into Pisces the very end of December um, really sets the tone for 2022 to be quite different than 2021. Ultimately, the lesson that we need to learn is that I don't care what you think. Well, I care. I don't mind what you think uh, and, and what I think, because what every one of us thinks is not quite right on. Um, you know, it, we, we get into these self-righteous places where, where we assume that this is true and that's not true. This is fact, and this is the way it is. All the people who think that are just crazy or stupid or, or being misled or hypnotized. And the fact of the matter is that what's going on right now is way more complicated than any of us can parse. I've been saying pretty much for the entire year of 2021, I'm going to say it again now, um, if anyone knows what's going on, they don't. If you meet someone who you know, you trust, and they say they know what's going on, they don't. If you think you know what's going on, you don't. If I say I know what's going on, I don't either. And in fact, even the people in charge, even the people who have created these, whatever the aberrated states are, people who have fostered the extremism, the divisions, even the people who, who have pushed all this to this point because they're in control and they know what's going on, they don't know what's going on either. This thing has gotten out of control and it's not gonna come back into control. It's not gonna come back together as quickly as we would like. And it's also not gonna come back together if one side, and this was one side on any one of the 
10, 20, 30, 50 issues out there economically, politically, environmentally, um, in our own relationships, in our own um, uh, family relationships, and so on. If there are any losers, there's not going to be any winners. And this is what makes it all complicated. This is the lesson to learn. We we need we need to have compassion. Um, I think of the Dalai Lama who says, um, whenever it's possible, have compassion. And then he says, it's always possible. And that's what we need to keep in mind. Even those people that we know are wrong, that are holding a position that's so bizarre, it's just they're misled, they're misguided. <laughs> that's what they think we are. And, and, and it's crazy because there will be a resolution to many of these issues. We will get to find a truth, but we're not going to do it until after that third and final um, Saturn square Uranus. And for that matter, Saturn and Uranus come back close together, not exact, next fall in the, in the autumn, Northern Hemisphere autumn of 2022. And it's really not going to be until after that. And that includes an election day in November of 2022. Um, it's going to take even until after that, until we know where this is going. So we need to do whatever we need to do in order to get by. We need to keep keep working on what our beliefs are and what we think we need to do and what we what we believe where we need to be active proactive um, for humanity not for our own power not because of our own fear not because of our own insecurity but as long as we can continue moving that road um, moving toward that high road and taking that road of integrity and even though there may be people who are diametrically opposed to what we believe believe, we need to understand everything as a polarity. There's no right and wrong. Even though we know there's a right and wrong, there's still two sides to the issue. And we have to keep those dialogues open because if one side wins, the other side loses, that side that loses will be suppressed, repressed, and it will come out. It'll be like a whack-a-mole at a carnival. And it doesn't matter how hard we hit it or how many times we hit it. It'll keep coming back stronger and stronger until there is some equanimity. Compromise does not mean giving up your position. Compromise means working something out so that we can all go on and continue dialogue. And that's it. That's what I have to say for this month. Um, uh, it's always important to think cosmically because that's where we get our perspective, but it's always important to act locally. If we don't act locally, if we don't um, figure out how to talk to those people that we hate, or if we can't figure out how to make amends and relationships in our own life, then there's no hope for finding uh, peace on the planet. As Carl Jung said, peace will never come from politicians signing treaties. Peace will come when the individuals on the planet have dealt with their own personal salvation and have worked their unconscious mechanisms into awareness and therefore have created positive relationships in their own individual lives. That's it. I'm out of here. By the way, um, don't forget, but my Patreon, that's uh, patreon.com slash Rick Levine, um, has offerings of other teachings and other videos of mine. Uh, you can find your own level of involvement if you'd like. And even if you're not interested in getting a lot more videos, just going on to Patreon, tossing in a dollar a month helps support me doing these videos, plus the daily um, Instagram and Facebook uh, daily planet pulse that I do. Um, and uh, that's on Instagram at Rick Levine Astrologer and on Facebook at Rick Levine Astrologer. Thank you all for your support. And I will see you all shortly uh, for the mid-month update for those of you on Patreon um, who get the mid-month update. Thank you very much and keep breathing and find a way to be compassionate, be kind. That's what's most important right now. I'm Rick Levine.